Let me start. My work day to day is to understand the behavior of animals. Those up there are examples of the animals on which I worked along my career. And in every single case, I've been fascinated, as most people are, by the extraordinary things the animals do and what they know how to do. They can build wonderful nests, they can navigate home from a distance, they know how to raise their offspring, all these things. But where does knowledge come from? Does it come from their genes? Does it come from their understanding? And this is what I'm going to discuss today. So from the point of view of the theme of today, my main concern is how does knowledge get transmitted, through which channels, and what does knowledge constitute in any case, in animals or, of course, in a particular species, which is um, us, as we are sitting here. So, Let's start by classifying the kinds of knowledge that animals have. There are different sources, and some knowledge comes straight from design, from the way that animals are built because of their history through natural selection. Some kind of knowledge comes through reasoning, to the fact that they can learn something in one situation and transmit it to another, and they can operate with that information. And some comes from learning from their experience, on the problems they are facing or learning from others. And I'm going to go in a sweep analysis through all these different forms. Let's focus first on design. Suppose that you face the problem of how to teach a frog to operate an iPhone. You might think that it's very hard, but they actually do it almost as well as any teenager, and certainly better than most of us at our age, at my age, and just by responding to the way they have evolved. These animals are selected by evolution to respond to things that are elongated and move along their main axis, because things that do that are mostly bugs. So they could, in theory, be more selective, more finicky about it, but if they did, they would miss many real bugs. On the other hand, if they responded to anything with whatever movement and shape, they would be kind of triggering their tongue every time to things which are not bugs. So natural selection can do that, and it sculptures their knowledge through evolution, and it passes through the generations through genes. Let's go to a more complex phenomenon. In this case, we are looking at a cockatoo that's facing a very complex problem. There is a nut at the end of this process, actually in a small window that you'll see next to the wheel that appears there. And in order to open the window, the animal needs to shift the bar, but it can't do that because the wheel is there. So in order to actually shift the bar, it needs to turn the wheel, so, and to turn the wheel to align it to the, to the pin that is there, and move it forward so that the bar can go through. But it can't turn the wheel because there is a kind of cylinder, steel cylinder there, that is holding it in place with a notch. So, in order to move the wheel, it has to lift that cylinder. But it can't lift the cylinder because there is a screw there that has to be undone all the time. But the screw cannot be undone because there is a pin at the end. So, if you expose a cockatoo for about two hours, this is what you see this animal doing. So, by this, the animal knows exactly what to do. You can see it first taking the pin, that it did there, and now is operating the screw. And the animal has learned by trying with all the different pieces what brings it closer to the target, which in this case is completing the series of logs. But interestingly, it doesn't get any reward at the end of each particular movement. It only gets a reward when it completes the whole operation. And this is when it finally succeeds. Now, let's try to judge whether they really understood anything at the end of this process of learning. In order to do that, what we do is to transform the problem. We sometimes remove the wheel, 
We sometimes, I'm blocking you, sometimes we remove the wheel, sometimes we remove the screw. And what we look at is after many different transformations, whether they follow the routine of actions that they followed in the first case, or they are actually going directly to the thing that has to be done in this particular occasion. So let me move forward. In this case, for example, this describes all the transformations we've done and what is the lock that the animals had to operate after that particular transformation. And in the graph, we show the data showing exactly what they do right. Whenever you see a star, what it means is that the first things they touched was the thing that was the correct thing, what you would have done after understanding what is the problem. So they significantly learned something about the mechanics of mechanical properties of the system and not simply a series of actions. What is transmitted is some form of understanding which is our task to actually explore. So um, if we move on and we ask what can get transmitted by social observation, we can watch another cockatoo, in this case is one called Figaro, that discovered by itself how to produce a tool in order to reach a nut which is out of its cage. And he did it entirely spontaneously by cutting a piece of wood from the beam in the aviary and holding in its mouth and using it to actually operate it appropriately, as one of us would do, to actually extract it. So this story that only humans and maybe chimps could operate with tools has long been left behind. But what is interesting for me in this particular case is that only one cockatoo out of many seemed to learn this because he had a kind of constellation of situations that led to this particular new form of understanding. So we thought, what would happen if this animal displayed its skill to other conspecifics? Would they learn from him? And if they do, what kind of knowledge would be transmitted from Figaro to the others? And so we did the following experiment. What you see here is in the top, a diagram where it shows an observer, a problem where there is an, what it says apparatus, it's just a cage with um, food inside, and uh, Figaro, which uh, in the top diagram is sitting on the shoulder of an experimenter, and in the bottom one is actually facing the problem itself, is actually displaying its skill. After doing it, we allow the observer animal to interact with the apparatus. And look what happens in this case. What you first see is Figaro doing its own demonstration. And as you see, Figaro does it by holding the tool from the distal end and keeping it in the air and poking through the openings of the mesh, as it did in its cage, in order to reach at the nut and finally obtain it. But now watch what the observers did. In this case, they also discover how to use a tool, but what you see here is that the form of operating the tool is entirely different from what the teacher did. It learned, discovered a better way of doing it, appropriate for the case where the floor is slippery, as in the conditions of the test, which wasn't originally when Figaro discovered. This is another animal that does it in a completely different way. It uses his tongue to push the tool in, but also discovers a better way than what the teacher did. This is extremely important for us as educators as well as to, for us animal behaviorists. What these animals have done is to emulate the teacher by actually getting the idea that you can use tools and what tools can be useful for, but they didn't actually imitate the specific movements that the teacher used. That's what we would like in our best students, that's what we would like for our best teachers, to actually be able to transmit ideas and convince students to think by themselves, transmit ways of thinking. But now let's consider the problem of one individual that discovers something in one situation and has to face a completely different one. In this case, the animals have learned to make a tool by actually clipping a piece of wood 
out of um, a piece of uh, pine wood, which is long and has fibers. And they can use it in this apparatus to obtain the nut that is being held there. But immediately after learning that, we give them an entirely different material. And we say, can you transmit your discovery of tool use by making them in one particular, from one particular substrate to an entirely different one, like actually having twigs that need to be sculptured by removing lateral twigs and leaves, and they all did it immediately. So once again, what they transmit from one case to another is not generalizing the actions, but getting the idea that you can use a tool. But what if we give them a completely unstructured material, like a piece of cardboard that actually hasn't got any fibers, and because of that has to be cut and got at the right length, ended at the right length, so that actually, and it has the right width, so they can go through the whole of the apparatus and can actually serve as a tool. They also did it. Not all of them, but some of them did. So once again, just as one individual can learn from another to think about the problem and the general idea of the solution, rather than copying the actions, one individual can translate into another situation ways of thinking, ways of solving the problem that include a great deal of innovation. So what we would like, in general, is to follow the way that wisdom travels in nature. We want to understand that some wisdom can travel through genes, through generations, and is built in our brains as much as in the brains of different species, but it's not a general purpose machine. It's built to do certain jobs, whatever helps us in the light of natural selection. But we also want to know that this wisdom, this know-how, can be transmitted but in that case, it, we need to understand what is it that can be transmitted. Is this ways of doing, or is it ways of thinking, or is it ways of solving problems? And we also want, of course, to transport things through reasoning and understanding. In many cases, we understand how things get copied in terms of the channel of transmission, but we don't know exactly what is it that has been transmitted. Even in a case so simple as the cockatoos, that actually got the idea, aha, I can use a tool for this, but the tool I'm going to use has to be new. I'm going to invent it, I'm going to design a new, a novel one for the current situation. They don't have guidance for that. Even in those situations, we don't understand well what is the content of what is transmitted. But we do know that emulation, that is, the use of a role model to attempt a problem by ways of thinking, ways of tackling in innovation, learning to innovate, is more important than actually just copying fixed actions in order to repeat like a parrot, as it were. Thank you.